With Hashem's loving grace, welcome to Amuna Beams with your host, Laser Brody. Today's podcast is entitled, Why the Catastrophes? And it's intended to enable us to make sense out of everything that's happening to us in these challenging times. We've just entered the three weeks again, the notorious period between the 17th of Tammuz and Tisha B'Av, when the worst things happen to the Jewish people throughout history. We can't possibly understand the three weeks without understanding the root of Tisha B'Av and the destruction of both holy temples. It was the eve of Tisha B'Av when the 12 spies returned to the Israelite encampment from 40 days of scouting out the land of Israel. All of them, except for Kalev ben Yifuneh from the tribe of Judah and Yeshua ben Nun from the tribe of Ephraim, said slander about the land of Israel and about how dangerous it was. So that night, the entire Israelite nation sat in their tents and cried. So Hashem said to them, Okay, you want to cry for nothing? I'll give you plenty of reasons to cry for generations to come. We know that Hashem runs the world measure for measure. So if the Jewish people cried for one night, then why didn't Hashem punish them for just one night? Why didn't Hashem make a one-night holocaust or some other catastrophe and then consider the sins atoned for? Well, the answer is easy. It wasn't a sin just for one night. People are still saying terrible slander about the land of Israel. The sin, therefore, has not only been corrected, but it's perpetuated. Measure for measure, the three weeks in Tisha B'Av are also perpetuated. So these are the two things that people must do right now. The first you have to do right now is to stop saying bad things about the land of Israel. When I say the land of Israel, I'm not referring to the anti amuna government of Israel. These are two entirely different things. The land of Israel is Hashem's palace. It's Hashem's chosen holy land where His divine presence never leaves from. The government of Israel, it's got nothing to do with the Torah of Israel or Halacha, and has an entire governing and judiciary system which is really hostile to Halacha and those who observe it. So don't confuse between the two. The second thing that you have to do as soon as possible is to make Aliyah. I know it's difficult to hear, but the land of Israel is an entire different spiritual rhythm for a Jew. No Jew outside of Israel thinks twice about it buying an apple or a peach anywhere at a roadside stand, wherever you want. But a Jew in Israel has to make sure it's kosher fruit that grew on a tree that was at least four years old. The Jew in Israel worries about trumas and maestras. If they were properly taken from the fruit, the fruit was properly tithed. He has to know what year this is in the Shemitah cycle in order to properly tithe the fruit because there are different maestras in the third and sixth year than there are in the first, second, fourth, and fifth year. These are mitzvahs we live by. This is the rhythm of the land of Israel. And so many mitzvahs are dependent on the land of Israel, which you can't fulfill outside the land of Israel. What's more, here you can feel emuna because the Gemara tells us in Tractate Ketubo, the land of Israel is the land of emuna. Recently, I told a family in Canada to move to Israel right away. They asked the rabbi, and the rabbi told him not to budge. He turned them completely off about Aliyah by saying all types of bad things about the land of Israel. Well, the Gona Vilna says there are two mitzvahs that a person does with his entire body, sitting in a sukkah and living in the land of Israel. So I wonder what the esteemed rabbi in Canada will say to the heavenly court when they throw the book at him for preventing a family from making aliyah and doing so many mitzvahs they can't do in Canada. There you go. It's the sin of spies still alive and kicking right with us. I'm not going to tell you that it's easy in Israel now. It is definitely not easy. The Gona of Vilna says in chapter 11 of his classic book, Evan Shlema, that right before Mashiach comes, the leaders in Israel will be reincarnates of the heir of Rav. Thank God they have nothing to do with the holiness of the land of Israel. The real reason a person must come here is to get close to Hashem, not to look for a comfortable life or an easy life. What's more, if we look at chapter 14 of the book of Samuel 2, we see that Hashem looks for ways that no one will be left behind. Hashem wants us all here so He can bring Mashiach already. So don't wait until you have to escape from the shattered economy and violence in the streets that looks just like Germany before the rise of Hitler. The massive economic meltdown and unemployment in the USA is a breeding ground for heightened anti-Semitism that starts out in words and ends up in violent tragedy. But I don't want to go there. I don't want to talk about negative reasons. Come to the land of Israel for the good reasons, the wonderful reasons, as a matter of choice, as a Jew, and not as a refugee escaping from some catastrophe. Eretz Yisrael is the place to feel Hashem and to get close to Hashem. It's the only place on earth 
when you can observe the entire Torah and fulfill its mitzvahs. It's the place where you can live as a Jew and feel like a Jew. Meanwhile, get yourself a bottle of Land of Israel wine or some fruit from Land of Israel and put them on your Shabbos table. Taste the plant, the wine, the fruit. You'll be tasting the Kedusha, the holiness of the Land of Israel. Praise Hashem and praise the Land of Israel. That's easy. That's not hard to do. And then contact Nefesh Benefesh and start the ball rolling for Aliyah. In fact, contact his head, Rabbi Yehoshua Fass, F-A-S-S, and tell him that Laser Brody sent you. Beg Hashem every day in your prayers to bring you to the land of Israel. And even if there are big obstacles holding you back for the time being, with enough desire, Hashem will move the obstacles out of your way once we correct that nasty national sin of the spies who wanted to remain outside of Israel and not come here. We correct that terrible blemish on our national soul and Hashem will turn Tisha B'Av into a day of great joy when we meet Mashiach in our rebuilt holy temple. Speedily, Amen. God bless.